27 staples removed today. She's doing a lot better. Little hair of the dog that bit you there. Hi. Welcome to Kenna Spader Christmas. So the subject of bus bars uh, might seem like a no brainer, but it is one that kind of has evolved over the years. As people share their designs, uh, new ideas pop up, people steal those, it's, it's okay. Um, but you might be thinking, bus bars, you know, big whoop, whatever, you know. So, <laughs> As it turns out, it's it's actually very important of the overall system because it carries energy into and out of the cells. So as an example, um, you need a way to get the energy out of each one of these cells. So people have put bus bars in there like this. Can you see it? Um, you bring it down here to a single point and then they put a lug on that and that's how you get energy out of that side you have another one on this side that does the same thing now uh, one thing that people have found out that you need to alternate them so that uh, let me hold on to that so that current comes in one way and then out the other if you put both of the lugs at one end the cells over here tend to heat up so if you let it go through the whole pack everything works out well. On this design, one of the things that people started finding a trouble with was when you have your lugs here, you can actually, you know, bend this out. And so any connections that you have right up here break off. Um, so what the, one of the workarounds was to put just stronger wire up here and put fuses on the back. Um, I actually saw a different design that I'm going to show you in this video that I think will alleviate that. We'll see. Now, I, I'm also going to show you a couple of designs just for the bars themselves. Uh, and you can choose whatever you want. So the, the kind of standard twisted method is to use standard house wiring. It's probably 12 gauge. Uh, in the U.S. we call it Romex. It looks something like this. Um, so you go down to the, you know, local home improvement store, you buy a 25 foot roll of this, uh, you just get it started. Let me do this quickly on camera. Now watch it not work. But you can, you can usually just pull it off like that. So now you've got your three conductors, you've got ground, which is already the insulation is already gone and then you have to pull the insulation off of these two wires now, if you're in a different country you may have different colors but you know the similar kind of deal so you twist these together to form this type of little bar and that's a design i've also found some solid copper wire that's uh, number six gauge and so this is what I'm going to be using because I find it a little easier to work with. But I'm going to show you both ways of, of doing it. The idea is to twist the leads with a drill which strengthens and stiffens them. Uh, you put a little tension on it and twist it up a little bit. Now here you can see the twisted side on the left and the untwisted side on the right. Now you want to do that for each of the three conductors. We have several of these that are now twisted. Probably group them in threes. Uh, I may do one for four just to see. Now just twist all three of them together the same way. 
Now it's best to have a vise to hold everything or just, you know, make sure one end is pretty stable. I have a pair of vise grips, so uh, this one is not something that I would recommend that you do, but this one worked out pretty well. I also tried to twist four conductors together with this same setup. Now I couldn't get all four to stay in the chuck, so I put them inside of a butt splice first. This top one is the three conductors twisted together without pre-twisting them. Now you see you get these areas in here where it, it doesn't twist up very well. The second one is three conductors of pre-twisted wire. This usually works out pretty well. This third one was four conductors. I probably didn't put enough tension on this wire while I was twisting them together. They were pre-twisted, so not really sure what went on there. I'm guessing it's the setup that I had. So like I said, I also found this bare copper single conductor six gauge wire and it, you use the same process. You, you just twist it to straighten it out. Uh, here's what it looks like after some twisting. And then here's a comparison of some twisted 12 gauge wire and some six gauge solid copper. Now the solid seems to be slightly larger just based on how they went into this small vise that I'm using, but they are pretty close. Here's the length of twisted six gauge wire. I want to find the center. It, it, it doesn't have to be exact. So just looking for close to the center here. Then I'll put a bend in it using a small jig that I built. This will make up a bus bar for one side of one cell pack. So I'll need a total of 14 of these. Now my first design was to use my soldering iron turned up all the way uh, to solder a crossbar at the opened end of the bar. Now I could tell by watching the temperature readout that the bar was stealing a lot of heat from the iron. And, you know, once it stopped dropping and started warming up, I could add solder to the joint and you know it did take a while to get the solder to flow but eventually it did flow properly as i was working on this i did notice one small problem if i turn the cell pack on its side which is how i plan to use them you'd be able to see you know a bunch of different colors now in order to keep all my internet friends from laughing at me i wanted to make them all one color so the solution is to either rewrap all the cells or just rearrange them using the dominant color, the color of the largest number of cells. You know, I, I want it to look nice. All right, so once all the cells are in the holder, I'll just tap the cell holder down with this wood block and a small hammer. I'm not hitting it real hard. I just, I just want to seat the cells in there. If you go too hard, you can actually break the cells through the cell holders. As a temporary measure, I'm gonna hold everything together with wire ties through the cell pack. Now, I pre-drilled a few holes through the cell holders. Just feed the wire ties through the holes and wrap the wire ties around the bus bars and back through the hole to the other side. And it does take a little futzing and longer wire ties probably would be a little easier to deal with, but these fit well enough. Again, don't tighten these too much, just enough to make them lock in place. Here's what it looks like all together. The positive side comes out one way and the negative side comes out the opposite direction on the opposite side. I noticed that the crossbar joint wasn't very strong and decided to make a slight change. Now, I don't think there'll be much current flowing through here anyway, but I still want to put something there to just give it some strength and to make sure both sides are electrically the same. I decided to go with a piece of 12 gauge wire twisted around the bar and soldered that in place with a torch. I really just wanted an excuse to play with my torch. I'm also going to let it hang off the side a little since it adds a little space to the bar. So with the loop at the edge of the pack, I'll measure where I want the crossbar. I wrap the wire around the bar. Now it, it's loose right now, so I can still adjust it. 
I want these two bars to be right in the center between the two rows of cells. So I'll wrap the other side. Hold on. Still loose. Now, if I needed to adjust the length of the crossbar, I can pull it off and use some needle nose pliers to roll it out just a little bit. Once I'm happy with everything, I'll solder that in place. Now this goes a lot faster than using a soldering iron. I did have to flip these over a few times to get rid of the globs of solder, but I like this version a little bit better and it seems to do what I want. Plus, I got to use my torch. Once it cooled down, I took some 220 grit sandpaper and just removed the oxidation from the bus bar and cleaned up the solder joint. Here it is all cleaned up. And from now on, I will not touch the bar with my bare hands. I don't wanna get any oils on the bar. I'm hoping that'll make it a little bit easier to solder. The crossbar hangs off just a little bit, but that's okay. Here's two bus bars for one cell pack. I'm gonna put connectors on the end of them before attaching them to the pack. It's a little easier than trying to do that after the fact. I got some six gauge welding cable off Amazon. Now I'm gonna go with about six inches for each side. I am also using 75 amp Anderson plugs for the connectors. I got these directly from Anderson. I'll measure using the tip and cut some insulation off the welding cable. This went a lot easier off camera. I'll go ahead and prep all four wires. I'm going to double crimp each one of these with this crimping tool. Now they do make a pneumatic crimper, but this one seems to work okay. I'll cut some heat shrink tubing to link for both ends. And shrink around the crimped connection. For the other end, I'm using butt splices to connect these wires to the bus bar. I'm putting the Anderson shells on the ends right now so I can make sure that when I go to connect everything up, everything's oriented in the right direction. This is what it looks like crimped together. And finally, some heat shrink for the other end. And this is what it looks like on the positive side. And here's the negative side. So now I just need to do that six more times. I hope you found some of this information useful. As always, if you have any questions, leave them below. Other than that, thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon. Now I shot an email. Game, game. So I got six of these and so they, I got five.